This is FFPÖ, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFP. My name is Paul. I'm, as always, your gracious overlord and co-host. Well, main host. Let's let's call it what it is. Nelly's showing up so so few in the last few episodes that I'm the main man and he's only the petty co-host. But we have a oh it's first of all it's the 20th episode and we're recording on the 17th of January 2017 17 1 2017 nice and Ooh. yeah exactly and you hear him already in the background um <laughs> it is Tommy my Ortiz yay Tommy thank you for being here Thank you for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Oh, it is a pleasure still. <laughs> it's been a pleasure thus far. Yes. You, I, I hope I was an appropriate host. Yeah. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. You, you, you repopped the popcorn. I thought that was pretty umwelt friendly. Well, go. you know, you can't waste unpopped kernels. That's just, it's just, <laughs> I don't know, frivolous. It's, it's very Austrian of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's why I'm here. I like efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, Austrian not, efficiency. I'm, not, I'm not too Germanic on the efficiency thing, though. Yep. I mean, I I honestly think that Austria is a is is a, a good mix of Eastern pragmatism with, right. with Germanic efficiency. precision, just enough. Yeah, yeah. just enough. Not yep. an, not yep. an overdose. Yeah, I think they properly described it with uh, Michael Fassbender who is half German half Irish Ooh. and he hims, uh, in, a, in, a, in a show he he once was like asked he's like okay so you're half German half Irish your good day beer looks, horrible food <laughs> both <laughs> ways <laughs> your, 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 your day must look like uh, we have to do it exactly this way tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> and he's like yeah and that's i think that also fits with the austrian soul in a certain way but Tomor just for the for the listeners who don't know you who are you what do you do yeah do, right. tell us tell us all about you i'm a resident of vienna austria right i've been yeah. here for quite a long time uh, more than half my life nice so i'm kind of an echt of vienna yeah it pulled its grip around you and didn't let go yeah i came here mm. uh for the same reason 99.3 percent of all people come to vienna or austria yeah uh romance and that, <laughs> that's all those those austrian women right yeah it's, it's horrible in, it's interesting how they, and austrian you men. know that's one thing it's interesting how they they appear so exotic and and mm -hmm. the, the end all of all women and then when you come back Back here, I think something happens in the plane or something over <laughs> the Bur over the Bermuda Triangle. Oh yeah, yeah, and something shifts. Yeah, yeah. The getting closer to the nest thing, and this is not a negative thing. It's just an anthropological observation. Yeah, I have so, the same reaction to American women. You've heard this before, kind of. Right? Yeah, okay. but I experienced it on my own body, basically. Ah. I was that close to either moving to New York or Boston. Uh -huh. But I was like, no, Paul, this is stupid. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you listened to your intuition. Yeah, weird, uh, right? <laughs> different parts of the body can override that wonderful intuition. Yeah, I know, I know. But you are a resident of Vienna. What do you do here? What what what's what's the dig? Because we got to know each other through your really fun crowd work. Oh, well, you. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You're so. talking about the stand up I did yes. last week. Yeah. Th thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a that's a great plus. Very very at least for me very offbeat um I don't know. I wouldn't call it alternative because that's just too broad and overused nowadays. Yeah. Um well, that was that was a raw set. A raw oh, set. super raw! The that was so raw it gave me an yeah. STD. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 
I, one of the good ones. Had I had longer or more time, I might have gone in that direction too. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what burning your own set or? I. <laughs> or or burn, bur, burning STD. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit yeah. column A, column B, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for some results to get. Oh, never, never mind. I won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, to answer your question, I have three careers here. I'm yeah. A, I'm kind of a linguist. I do translation and uh, right. interpretation. Yeah. Which pulls me away from the craziness of the entertainment world yeah i like the balance mm. um, my other two careers are in music composition and right in fil filmmaking nice and that's going pretty well and those two actually go coalesce together quite well coalesce together coalesce yes yeah. they coalesce very yeah very neatly into each other yeah and yeah. i i tend to be writing about uh musicians and mm -hmm. performers that their right. lives or or how how the uh, music and dance affect people's lives right in, in crazy ways yeah i am a i'm a little bit of a crazy person but that's any any american who's lived here for a long time yeah you 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 in, in austria yeah the first thing probably that's in the first five or ten years uh, like wait, the state is doing that for you too? And afterwards it's like, wait, the state is not doing that for you? <laughs> <laughs> like probably you get so right. used that the social security nets are so tightly knit uh -huh. and then you might see the holes after a while. Is it, was, it, was that your experience? I do. There, you know, there are some holes here. Yeah. But yeah. as I think I've, I've taken on that that Eastern pragmatism that yeah. is so so rich and wonderful here. Right. And quite frankly, everything runs here. Everything's clean. Yeah. I'm very grateful to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't for a while, but I held to the maxim that uh, before you're born, before you, when. At, Before you have kids, your home is where your parents are. Right. And this, the instant where you, your kids are, are born, th mm. that's where your home is. Yeah. And my kids were here. I, I, uh, I got divorced. We got divorced back a few years ago. Right. But I stuck around. Well, you kind and, of have yeah. to fulfill this statistic. Yeah. And on, <laughs> a, on a more serious note. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, we we got the deed done. We got the beautiful yeah. kids. Yeah. Um, They're not I, really fucked up. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, pretty much when the kids hatch, when when the kids hatch, uh, you have you have basically to take all your priorities and throw them out the window. True. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think I made a good choice. I'm mm -hmm. happy about that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the third thing, well, you've. You you're doing film and music and and a little bit of stand up now. Yeah, actually, that's to reinforce my acting because I'm I'm getting in front of the camera on a few things. Okay. Instead of being behind, I, I'm mm. I was generally I'm generally a writer. That's my main thing. Okay. A writer of music and writer of film comp composer. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm trying to be a performer and be a be in front of the camera as an actor yeah and the main film i'm writing right now that i'm working on is called the mole yeah you told me about and, that yeah and it's got a lot it takes the piss completely out of austria nice a lot, lot of a lot of gags a lot of things i can't it's uh under under wraps right now so yeah. I, can't, i can't talk too much about the plot and you get plugs at the end of the episode so oh. you can talk about all your in detail all about your stuff later on fantastic yeah okay all right let's move on to the first segment of this here podcast and that's plot plot of what <laughs> of the episode we watched uh for the listeners who didn't read the description and just download the episode for some reason uh -huh. um <laughs> this fanta fantastic oh. parody Yes, it's oh. it's already I think kind of a pa uh, not only a p parody but actually a period piece about a certain segment of Austrian history that still echoes into what we are now. 
sure. in a certain way because it what we watched was the Piefke saga an RF production made by um, the amazing Felix Mitterer exactly who wrote the G genius. book yeah just a, a, a very keen observer of the Austrian soul and it the the, the it's it's a four part series uh, four movies at the end because when it's an hour 28 minutes long it's a movie it's not a TV show anymore in my eyes especially sure. if you're doing a four part series you can't really call that a mini series it is a four part movie series sure. at that point even if it's made for TV and it's uh, it was released the first episode in 1990 uh, starring an amazing cast of, 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 of soon to be famous or already famous Austrian and German actors and actresses just they did such a good job casting that thing I think it carries like I don't know a third of the, the whole project is just how well the casting was done in my opinion sure yeah it makes me wonder um, if I, I mean, at the time, were all those guys no names at the... At the at no, the no, no. Like Kurt Weinzel was already fa famous through Cotton. Uh, okay, these, that, he's the guy who played the Burgermeister. Exactly, the, the hotel, mayor. Yeah. Hotel owner. Yeah, like the mm -hmm. multiple business owner and mm -hmm. also mayor right. of the, the small town of... A Tyrolean town of Lannenberg. Yeah. Does that actually exist? I don't know. I actually have to Google it. <laughs> but knowing Austria, I'm pretty sure that there is a Lannenberg. Yeah. There's got to be. Yeah. Maybe three of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, really, in, in Austria, there's some, there's some uh, town names that repeat themselves. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have that in the US and in, 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 in England, too. Sure. Yeah. You have, I don't know. It's just that I'm from York and I was, New York. I was raised in Oregon. Oregon is oh uh, yeah more, more than cheese town. No. More than twice the, the, the land mass of, of of Austria. Yeah, with so, what half the people? No, about one fourth the people. Jesus! So, so there's nobody there. No, not Jesus. That's Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought Wisconsin was cheese, not Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Put the cheese back into Jesus, or something. That's right. the Wisconsin yeah. model, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, to, and to, da to date this feed, I'm I'm a big NFL fan, and uh, Green Bay did a wonderful job beating my long-term team, the Cowboys. So. Right, and go go Green Bay anyway. Okay, there's right. no Lannenberg. There is no Lannenberg. Okay, nope. Well, there you go. No so. results for Lannenberg. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's a very Austrian sounding. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very Austrian sounding. The whole set design and everything really transports you into that feeling yeah. of summer vacation in Austria. Sure. I don't know why I said that Lannenberg sounds Austrian, but I think I've been here, I've been here uh, 28 years. Yeah. And you just start to recognize things. As oh, you yeah, do. totally. So, I, 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 I confirmed your theory. It's, it's yeah. very Austrian by its nature. And that, that's definitely very intentional for the whole show. Yeah. And so the plot of the episode is basically it's a German, uh, North German in Berlin, a German family, very, very rich, very well off, who visits every year for eight years straight, I think, at this point, uh, Tyrol to do to go there for summer vacation. Right. Yeah. And they love the quaintness and the little things and like how the Tyrolean people speak and everything. Like they, are, they are intrigued by all the cliche aspects without looking behind, really behind the curtain. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's, that's at least, I think, the, 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 the main plot. And on the other side, you have the, the Austrians, the Tyrolians, who try to keep the, after a scandal as it's not it wasn't really a scandal but it was of course overblown by the germans because germans gonna german and germans gonna overreact sure yeah <laughs> well, 
you know, I, I'm a big fan of Felix Mitter, and yeah. he, he he typified it greatly, perfectly. Um, the thing is, see, see, I I I don't know if I mean I'm I'm a semi world traveler. Yeah, and for me to imagine that. You go from one nation to the next one across the border, and that's your summer vacation for many, many years. Yeah. Is not necessarily traveling at all, especially that they're going... But see, there's this... They're staying with completely within the comfort zone. Yeah, it's same the language. Most, it's the most exotic you can go without actually putting any effort in it. Right. Yeah. yeah same language. Yeah. So there's no challenge there. Yeah. And then um, I think that... The, the deal okay so the deal is i guess the big the big it's a it's a ruse it's basically making fun of the the ruse which is yeah uh the austrian hospitality industry yeah uh luring the germans for their deutschmarks back in 1990 yeah yeah and but the thing is it still goes on i mean this is not this is never going to change no yeah this is all on and they've got the that, that's why this episode well this whole quadrilogy works so well is the fact that it is still true nothing's gonna it's a, change it's a well-oiled machine and it's not so well oiled, and, and yeah. that machine is not gonna change they're yeah. not gonna we know, only get more tourists that's right? the only thing that we do yeah. we just keep expanding it's it's crazy like sure um i'm from Vorarlberg, which is even more western than the most western part of Austria and so we are even more more of a mountain fall, folk folkish people than the Tyrolians and <laughs> that's a they, good, that's a good thing right <laughs> yeah it's fine it's fine I'm, I'm never gonna live there but I love my, my relatives and everything I love to, to visit there but all with its limitations like I, I like to enjoy like culture and other people <laughs> but they they throw money on the wall for for new ski lifts and and stuff like that what does that mean throw money on the wall just you know are you translating something directly from german i think so. um no Possibly. i don't know I, I just made up a new thing throw money like in a money pit like no it's hole? not in the money pit because it's it's more of like you 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 still it's still money well spent kind okay. of but it's still an insane amount of money yeah yeah gotcha yeah it's just projects that are so huge for such small communities that it's really make or break for them like uh, if if right. that ski lift doesn't work out that community is fucked yeah. <laughs> basically sure. and and uh, it's still it's still going on it's still happening even though, as compared to Tyrol, um, Vorarlberg does have more heavy industry and stuff like that. So, aww, nice. Cute dog is also here. We, you're not going to see it, but yeah, just take my word for it. Really <laughs> cute dog. And um, yeah, so the, the Germans come to visit. The Austrian try to convince them to stay after the scandal. They pseudo leave. Well, let's let's describe what the scandal is. Yes. Basically, at the very beginning of the episode, yeah, the local Tyrolean newspaper, yeah, they want to change the headline from oh, it's, it's the time Viennese, for the Germans or something like that. To it's the Viennese newspaper, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it was pu also published in in, ah. in Tyrol. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they say that's why they kept yelling and uh, like it wasn't us it was the, the viennese people those are right. the real villains here the blame shift they yeah. need to blame things on the viennese yeah very typical austrian behavior yeah <laughs> blame another part of austria yeah exactly austrian viennese just blame the guys from burgenland that's how it really? okay. just goes more eastern and <laughs> people from Bungland just like ah that's the Hungarians that's pretty close to the border so. yeah <laughs> that's the last it attempt is the, it is the border yeah yeah <laughs> okay so uh, yeah the scandal itself began at the beginning with the TV show which was actually real clips from a real TV show and the question was 
where does the where does where does or what do you how, understand how, under the word pifke? Yeah. How would you describe the word pifke? Yeah, in, which if you this, don't know Austrian or German people is. I wouldn't even call it a a real insult at this moment anymore. Like now with 2017, I can call my German friend a Piefke without getting punched. But back in 1990, I think it was still a very heavy handed insult. Well, there was also Scheiß Piefke, which is... Oh yeah, that's the... Is that that a punch in the nose now or as it was before or... Scheiß beef is pretty. It is it, it is depends it, is it, on how you say it, but is, it is pretty hurtful. Um, you can even uh, make it m- even even make it even uh, uh, more intense and call him a huen piefke. Huen piefke. Yeah. Okay. Horror of a piefke. Which so scheiß piefke has kind of gotten nullified a bit. I I am. I haven't heard Scheiß Piefke in quite a long time. I think I think if you said it to a friend who was from Germany, he'd probably laugh. Yeah. 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 But you can throw it, like at the football match, you yeah. can definitely throw that as an insult. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And somebody's going to be mad at you. Definitely. Are you going to start a fight if you say Scheiß Piefke in any situation? Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I haven't Should used that word in a long, long time. Shall I dial a friend? And <laughs> <laughs> Let's call in a friend. Yes. Um, yeah. So they they described the the the, the word Piefke, and there was of course the the Germans weren't happy about that, and the Austrian tourism board basically sprang into action and started a whole. Um, uh, self subjugation or uh, self, uh, yeah, they were just voluntary uh, self voluntar- subjugation. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. what I call in it. In order to get some tourism money in the exactly, end. Yeah. yeah, it was. It's that's that's one of the main themes. It's that it's all about that sweet, sweet Deutsch mark. Yeah, yeah, which was which was a very, very. Sp- Stable and sort of the currency after all. It sure. was very hard money, just like the Austrian shilling. Yeah. Um, By so the way, is is the is the counter counter insult name of Pifka? Was it wasn't it shilling? Um, or mm, was, Uzi. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's like a striker. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or uh, Scheiß Uzi. That works. Ah, Schluchtenbrunze is a mm. very very uh, often used. And what does that mean? Or Schluchten Scheiße, one of those. What is a Schluchten? Uh, like a valley, if you're pissing down a valley. Mm. Yeah. Or into a ravine, I guess. A ver- What's a, what would be a very tall ravine? Canyon? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Canyon, canyon pisser or canyon shitter. Because uh-huh. we're all in the mountains and uh-huh. we don't have toiletry uh-huh. or, or, or uh, you know a public. Yeah. We don't know how Plum- to use plumbing. the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, public b- plumbing. So we just piss down our own mountains <laughs> or shit down our own mountains. Yeah, that would be like the appropriate counter. Okay, so insult. Accurate geographical reference with shit, yes, shitting, shitting yeah, shin piss. Yeah, of some sort. Okay. Yeah, bodily functions. <laughs> German precision. See. Right. right there. <laughs> <laughs> we engineered this this insult for twenty years. Uh, <laughs> observe. <laughs> so the the main character is Carl Friedrich. Yes. The are there any wait just just to clarify something? Yeah. Are there any Austrians ever 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 named this Carl Friedrich? Or this this hyphenated name. Oh yes, it Sometimes. is. Hyphenated names were a thing or are a thing with uh, rich people. Ah, okay. Yeah, giving them two Christian names. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very rich people, mm-hmm. and then hyphenated. Yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, Franz Ulrich yeah. or uh, Oliver Herbert. <laughs> Franz again. It's probably gonna be a derivation of Franz with something. Oliver probably. Mateus or something. Yeah. 
but yes, it's it's normally a sign of somebody who's a bit posh. Yeah, and I noticed the word a, bit, a the, little bit aloof. The name, those two names, mm -hmm. are a little bit more Germanic. German. Oh, than very Germanic. Yeah. Oliver and Matthäus. Yeah. Although I have seen some Matthäuses in in Austria, but it's a yeah. lot more in Germany. Yeah, it is. And yeah, that, that's probably historical, like some mm. kind of church thing. Or yeah, like, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Conquerors, or who knows what. Yeah, I yeah. So L Lutheran, <laughs> Lutheran versions. Yeah. So yes, Karl Friedrich uh, starts to is not happy with all those insults thrown at the German populace. So he decides to what, defend himself. What, what against was what it? was on what was in the magazine cover? What did it say? Oh, the the, the uh, who, who needs the piefke. Aha. Ja. Wer braucht die Piefke? Ja. Wer braucht die Piefke? Eigentlich, wer braucht eigentlich die Piefke? I think was the accurate title, but oh. who really needs the German ends would be the... Aha. Yeah. And then it had the... Who? They got a really fat... Oh, pardon me. Uh, yes. Over, uh, they got an overweight... No, no. He, he, he's fat. Yeah. They, uh, got, they got a fat local Tyrolean to... No, no. That was in back in Vienna. Okay. Those scenes happened all in Vienna. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's why yeah, the they whole got, thing they got to to typify the German yeah this o overweight guy yeah. with the they just with the camera and maybe I didn't see a fanny pack there but kind of that there was, was something there was like a, that like a fanny pack and then this this short of, shorts <laughs> with a tucked in t-shirt yeah Imagine the most German just, German. Okay, my T-shirt's not checked in. I'm just checking. <laughs> just, just checking. <laughs> With, oh, 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 yeah, um, yeah. The most German German that you can imagine. Basically, they used German tourists. They used that as the cover, and that pushed Karl Friedrich over the edge. After the TV show already got him riled up, and he said, "We're gonna leave now." And He's gonna say that in that show more than 10 times, I think. <laughs> it happens quite a few times that he's leaving right now. <laughs> um, always throwing around ultimatums and the, the, the Tyrolians try to calm him down and... He's threatening them with, by taking his Deutschmarks back to Germany, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That's um, swinging her around his... Um, his uh, uh, monetary prowess penis <laughs> MPP his MPP he's swinging around his, his monetary MPP. prowess penis his MPP M his MPP <laughs> German MPP <laughs> <laughs> mm, creepy mm. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump would enjoy that <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> topical humor. Look it up, guys, if you're listening to that for, for in a few years. Also, uh, dear Overlord Trump, I'm very sorry about offending you and bring you even close to bodily fluids. I know that you don't have to use those. I'm curious. I, I mean, you, you said the word overlord there. Yeah. And I think taken to its full extreme, if, if there was some kind of like way to... Uh, there was some some way to kind of slow down animate like real life animation like yeah. in, like in Matrix, right? And then Trump had all of the power, like really the, all of the power. Yeah, I think he would he would take he would go to Overlord measures. Oh yeah, because sure. he's a very resentful guy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm curious how this whole uh, urine thing is gonna pan out. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's Got to take the piss there. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> nice there's one. a very special place in hell reserved for comedians who are too proud of their own puns. And yeah. I'm definitely going there. <laughs> well, the thing is, somebody mentioned he never laughs. Like, he never... Yes, he's, he, he's basically a he, money-making robot. He's not... He's He never... Chills down to the point of just shooting the breeze with someone and laughing yeah. at whatever. Yeah. Like even something trivial. Yeah. He doesn't, and it's. Um, he didn't find the SNL um, his SNL uh, sketch funny. What the fuck? That was 
one of the best Alec Baldwin performances to date. I think that shit was fucking hilarious. Anybody could have seen that. Bush even laughed about himself and was a funny guy. Yeah. Senior and junior. Yeah. Yeah, and those guys are like those guys were regarded as like yeah, the real it makes me it makes me think that real unfunny guys. You know, you mentioned Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. It makes me think that in the in the states the 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 press is considered the fourth estate. Like it's actually a, like here, like a yeah. s- source of power and, and decision making. Yeah, and making and keeping thinking, the other three in check. I'm, I'm thinking that actually Saturday Night Live might become this like mo- monolith of policy making. You know, people will look back to them on Saturday and go, "Yeah, what's happened this week? What's yeah. what's what is our approach? well the the comedifying of news is a trend that already started like what twenty years ago mm-hmm. with the Daily Show oh. and then with with uh, is it that old Wow it's about That's twenty awesome. years now nineteen ninety five ninety three something around wow. that yeah awesome yeah yeah the Daily Show is super old now and um, and then you have. Nowadays you have the HBO like with the last week tonight and uh, what's his face, the 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 funny Irish dude. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you sure he's Irish? I mean, he might be Scottish. Bill Mayer. Bill Mayer. Oh, Bill Mayer is American. Yeah, but he has Irish ancestry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's an there was an, there's another guy, um, Scottish. Oh yeah, uh, you mean? Um, um, I've been wait. away for too long. Uh, Craig Ferguson. Craig, yeah. Craig, he only he doesn't have a late night show anymore. He has a History Channel show now. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't tread on me with Craig Ferguson. Is he, Is it serious? No. Uh, no. It's all about uh his talk like the world's greatest dictator for example and they had like six dictators or who was the most influential They're comparing them yeah yeah exactly and he has a comedian a historian or somebody so, else in as his guest it's 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 a blast it's should, a blast he needs to he needs to treat he, he needs to do something on, on austria though yeah. oh yeah well he did hitler so okay it's kind of austria yeah but modern day oh yeah I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind a little bit more of a magnifying glass on the whole Jurg Haider thing. Oh, I mean, I uh, I, I lost my self-made uh, Jurg Haider T-shirt. I have to reprint that. So it it was a really nice picture wait, of Jurg Haider. Who, who am I in the room with right now? And it says Austrian Patrick Swayze. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're both a little bit gay. <laughs> well, I, I know some people who know some people close to him. Wait, Patrick Swayze no, or your kind of yeah. And one of my one of my friends who I don't think has lied all of his life. Okay, he swore up and down that your kind was gay. Oh, he's so gay. Yeah, he had Petzna as his right hand man and probably his right hand man and yeah. uh hmm? reach around man yeah <laughs> <laughs> taking care of business ma- hand man um <laughs> yeah that that guy was super gay and he when he died uh, petzner actually called him his lebensmensch um, even though had was ha- married and had kids right that yeah th- was, that was a, some scandal at his funeral or something, right? He, or he yeah, gave yeah. some speech, right? Whatever. Yeah. Don't care. His yeah. party died. I'm fine with that. Yeah. It's so, let's go back to <laughs> the plot. So, the episode basically ends with 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 um, the Germans doing a big... Trying to have a big rile up at the town center in, in Lahnenberg. And the Austrians just steamed or steamroll them with kindness. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they drowned him out. Yeah, basically. Yeah, and it was kind of a there was a sight gag there too because there's the, the one one megaphone is bigger than the other kind of thing. Mm-hmm. 
you know, worn down around the midsection, so yep. it's not unlike some other appendage kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's all intentional. Always, oh, anyway. definitely. Yeah. So, There's too much thought in this show that this wasn't intentional. Yeah. Mm. Very, very efficient use of entendre the whole time. Yeah. So. Yes. Um. Yeah. I uh, I was gonna make a reference to a later episode, but I'm not gonna do that. So let's <laughs> no, no, let's focus on this one. Yes. I, I have seen that. I saw it back when it was being played in Austria on live on on, on television. Nice. And then they replayed it. Yeah. That must have been an event oh, God. back then. Yeah. Um. The, I have to say, um, so one one of the things as a foreigner yes. I saw is that um, the Tyrolians pointed their fingers to to the Viennese. It's, yeah, they said this is Emma de Vienna. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's not us, poor Tyrolians. Yeah, yeah. it's always our, the Viennese fucking things up for us. Yeah, it's us minding our own business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but that's also. Very historically, uh, very well. It was in at the moment a very much a truth, kind of, and like all, every Austrian has to pay the um, the tax for for the Viennese subway system. Right. There's like a little tax for the extension and building of the subway system. Okay. And it's it's a few few cents. For everybody really okay but it's still it still people. shows up on your paycheck as its own tax okay so people get angry about that in in Tyrol or everywhere yeah. everywhere yeah. everywhere yes. except for the Viennese because we have a pretty sweet subway yeah. system it is pretty sweet yeah, yeah. and then and uh, then the, there was uh, the fact that after this first and the second world war each um, Vienna was a huge drain on the budget in general because it was built for at the at the beginning of the war it was built for 2.2 million people during the war I think it went all the way up with all the wounded and stuff like to 2.4 2.6 million people and after that like in the 70s and 80s, 60s and 70s, I think till the mid 80s, you had like 1.4, 1.3 million people here. Like Vienna was a dead city and that all, all that stuff had to be kept running basically. And that did consume a shitload of money. The it paid off at the end because we needed all that stuff. We 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 built a lot of parks where there were bombed out buildings and all that stuff but it did cost a lot of money and it came a lot of that stuff came that money came from the other states in in in, in austria so days and it the central government is there and all that stuff so it's very easy for everybody else to hate vienna right definitely yeah well if you're getting hit in your pocketbook but the, uh, yeah, that's pretty typical of most countries where, yeah, people blame the city people, yeah, for the, yeah, yeah, the farmers or whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, you have it in Paris with the French, definitely, mm. because they have a very centralist government, way more than we do. Um, the Berlin. I did not know that. Yeah, the the French have a very, almost dictatorial in style type of government when it comes to running the country like every this nearly every, all the decisions are made at the top level in paris and then the rest is just there to make it happen make it so i guess c'est la vie yeah we oui. <laughs> brûlé <laughs> i have a i took very <laughs> I, I took very uh, little French. Yeah, I, I understand some. Um, there is a there is a phrase I remember. It, it's uh, um, after 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 you ask a question, oui. there, there's a response of, uh, um, 
wait a, wait a sec I'm contemplating what you just asked me yeah and it goes like this <laughs> nice <laughs> I'm so happy that the French are not listening to this podcast. It's uh, one of the very, even though we did a, a kind of French episode already, but fuck those guys. Um, if you're not going to listen, I'm going to shit all over you. Yeah, but so we are uh, after a long, long, uh, like, I don't know, we went on what, five tangents here. Um, we are going back That's and story moving, on to, m moving on to the next point. And that cinematography. As somebody who actually knows how to frame a shot and everything, how did you like it for a 90s TV movie? Well, I think that um, they probably cut a lot. They probably cut a lot. Um, yeah. I'm thinking that every single shot was incredibly efficient. There, oh yeah. There were no there were no building up shots. There's no establishing. They're not that, there weren't really any establishing shots there. There there was no wasted footage. Well, there was like a 2 second view of a valley or something like that, yeah. but all of them were necessary. There wasn't like extra fat. Yeah, it, yeah, there was no fat. And yeah. you you he really milked it. All the clichés, all the little utterances yeah yeah totally and i think he he uh when we say he felix mitter mitter um or oh, his head of cinematography i think he got the most uh tyrolean i think he got the most tyrolean mountain farmer baird bauer looking oh, looking yeah. guy he could find really yeah that, that exists in austria yeah and small uh, and it was just yeah it was it was all chuck full of cliches yeah um i have to say though on the flip side of that um i don't know if i mean i saw that when the first time when i had been here for one year yeah how old were you back then i don't know oh, <laughs> you I forgot don't know. already <laughs> i was i was probably 60 or 65 oh you're 100 you're 85 now nice turtle nice the turtle yeah and um uh, so i had to have my then girlfriend seem wait to you're be the character from entourage <laughs> <laughs> that's a reference that's gonna land with nobody <laughs> the turtle yeah no but at the at the time i had to have my then becoming wife mm -hmm. i don't know if i had proposed to her yet or not but yeah um and that's a whole nother story about uh, the the why of of proposing to an Austrian right when, right when you're realizing that you just proposed with a wheel of cheese and a barrel of wine and that's it yeah <laughs> it may have it may have been motivated by me wanting to stay here right and I mean nobody nobody admits that no nope. yeah that nope. that hey I'm doing a little bit of green card mentality here mm. yeah. Yeah. A little, I mean, who does? Oh no, it's completely love. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Not only the, do I, I guess better social security and everything, it's just a nicer place to live. Like, what's wrong? What's What's wrong with just with wanting admitting to it? Yeah. Just go. Yeah, we were totally in love, and I thought it was a really uh, smart thing to do. Yeah. And then there was the and extra benefit had, of staying we, in Vienna. We even had that talk. Yeah. You know. What, why is that a bad is that a bad thing I mean to say well yeah I was in love and we needed I needed a green card um, I wanted to stay here I didn't want to go back to the states I wasn't ready to go back to the states I started to fall in love with Austria right and its craziness yeah and yeah so I don't know what percent of me would have been the green card thing mm. but at the time hot hotel and back yeah back in that. but at the time she was my my now ex-wife yeah but he's one of my best friends by the way she's nice. awesome she she was explaining to me we, we we taped it and then she would explain so we would stop the thing constantly yeah I we watched it all the way through of course when we were on TV and then she would explain to me the the deep the, the intricacies. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty awesome. Right. 
And I learned a lot about Austria then. Mm. But the, the the big thing is take take a big mega picture of everything here and there's so much history about the German Austrian relationship. Oh yeah. Well, um, thousands of years now. Austrians so. are accused thousands of years. Mm. The Austrians are accused of being lemmings. Yeah. Yeah. Like falling all behind, yeah. you know, getting bootstep, lockstep between behind the Germans. Yeah, well, um, that's I don't most recent history. Basically. Yeah. yeah, I don't agree that not a shot was fired when Hitler took over in 1933 or what. Like my he, my there grandpa, was, there my, were shots fired. There yeah, was, my grandpa actually hit part of, partisans in his farm. So yeah, yeah, there were definitely shots fired. Well, yeah. my great grandpa, my grandpa was 16. <laughs> there, there, there was some resistance, yeah. The problem, I guess, I mean, to go push that a little bit farther, yeah. the problem was that everybody was starving. Right. And he, and he was pr- proud. He was... Uh, yeah, he destroyed, prob- helped destroy the Austrian uh, economy, and then he came in as the helping hero. <laughs> it's not- a very, very smart move. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, and he was. If you want to take over, he was country. offering coal in the stoves. Yeah, and, and bread goulash. And bread and bread and goulash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, but back to the cinematography, it's. It, oh yeah, we were in cinematography. It's more representation than flash. I think. Would you say? Well, would you say? if I if I'm doing completely. Well, if I if I'm doing completely cinematography, like no holds barred. Yeah. I would say this. They had a huge crew to do this. Oh, yeah. Um, they had a lot they had, of... They probably had a helicopter at some point. Right. They to had, get all that shit up the mountain. They had a handful of... Yeah. They had a handful of then popular actors and then people who were going to be very popular. Mm-hmm. That, and very good. Yeah. But no, na- no at the time, no names. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But what something I saw is that their scheduling was was not budging because they this episode they had as far as cinematography goes they shot a lot on on overcast days which is yeah not ideal didn't really tell the story of how, how beautiful uh, Austria is in the summer yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah but they shot it anyway yeah they had really a lot of overcast days and they yeah. had to live with that. Yeah, and you you saw that they had to use higher ISO, right? Uh, film it got grainy in some scenes, right? Yeah, that you can't. Well, you could repair it nowadays if you if they finally bothered to do a proper digital remaster of the show, but no. Yeah, they shot that on film. We just yeah. we established. Yeah, because you saw some markings or so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I saw the 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 circle with. The white, the white is cut in circle. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I think the cinematography was great, though. The framing was awesome. Oh yeah, for four yeah. by three shot, by the way. Yeah, he, classical TV format. He he who, he, Mitter actually did the cinema, cinematography. So. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, whoever did it, yeah. they they packed, they packed the frames, but not too cluttery, and so yeah. that's. I, it's an achievement. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, really, it's a pleasure to watch it. It's a pleasure yeah. to watch it. Yeah, just from from this that span, standpoint. But again, there's nothing like a crazy swivel shot or like a pan and zoom or some weird shaky cam shit that they are doing nowadays mm-hmm. or or that. Um, What's it called? Uh, uh, a dolly shot? I think there was n- not one dolly shot in this whole movie. I don't think so. I don't. I don't yeah. really. Re- it was all static. I don't recall exactly, but I don't. I don't think there was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. And they. That's followed, fine. Yeah, they followed the. I mean, some a lot of uh, cinematographers, uh, a lot of filmmakers have have that uh, approach that every it's. A, a, a film should read like a cartoon a right. com, like a comic book yeah like every every frame is pregnant yeah and totally that, that so as if you're asking me about cinematography yeah you know home run yeah really. definitely yeah well done to, to to a degree that's that's saddening if you look at, at at movies nowadays sometimes where you just have somebody 
shaking the cam for one and a half hours and then you have a special effects team that does the rest in post and that was the whole movie basically <laughs> yeah the, the the diversity of skills is big so but that was a definitely they had somebody with lots of experience yeah doing that. yeah yeah okay all right so let's move on to the next point and that's sound yeah the sound is great i mean they they did a lot of overlapping the uh, intro yeah it starts with the intro where you have this weird simpson-esque intro that's also the brady bunch and like uh, austrian german music mashup yeah, already that is amazing i think i i think they they already already because it looks so cheesy the beginning looks so cheesy it looks like oh you're gonna just watch a really nice uh, heimat film with some really nice germans and austrians in it and it's gonna be love and cookies and everything and then bam reality <laughs> yeah. well they they had the support of that great theme whoever wrote the musical theme. oh yeah it's it it interlaces yeah. the german umpa sound yeah with the, the some waltz even cha tempo change to yeah. uh like a, a, a smoother waltz and back mm. to that umpa thing yeah that's pretty genius yeah i mean it it really paints the picture right so yeah really good stuff really yeah. good stuff um also uh i really they they did i think one full power with the sound and one thing that i really enjoyed the 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 one thing that i really enjoyed was the joe signation and that's just some heavy metal track he rides in on his bike you hear the music coming in like from far away and then he zooms out and then you have the Doppler effect where it sounds different when he zooms away. And I thought that was very well done. I really, really liked that. That it, it made Joe like a standout character. Yeah. Because his personality doesn't carry him. It's all that surrounds him that makes him him. The bike, the music. And yeah, I, I really liked that. It's interesting that that's Tobias Moretti. Oh yeah, because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm a Tobias Moretti fan, and that actual, everybody should be. He try he didn't. I mean, he he fulfilled his role in this. Yeah, but that was by no stretch of the imagination a very challenging role. No, I mean he he had some lines, and but he did. He plays the village idiot basically, who's. He's the Kurt, Kurt, the Kurt from Gilmore Girls, basically. Get, getting all the odd jobs and being, in general, a, a massive idiot. <laughs> but a player with the girls. Because he's it's beautiful. Tobias Moretti. Yeah. He's a motherfucking handsome guy. <laughs> he's got a... Italian name, which is probably a subliminal allure. Yeah, uh, it's. I think he's he has South Tyrolean roots. Okay, so that would make sense. Mm. Like I, I, if I had my father's name, I had a Italian name too. I would be Tomaselli. Mm. Yeah, my ex-wife said says that he lives in the thirteenth district, like in over, yeah, over he's, he's, yeah, he's still up on the hill or there. Yeah, 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 he's still here. Okay, still hanging around. In the yeah. rich part of town. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are rich parts in Vienna now everywhere. <laughs> you have the first, you have the ninth, you have the seventh, you have parts of the sixteenth actually. Then you have the 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 the, the tenth parts of well. You parts have, of the tenth are rich. Yeah, really? Really? yeah, all the way out there. All the way out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not in the. Yeah. Yeah. center of the tenth sure. that's that's all racist and foreigners <laughs> together yeah perfect combo perfect Thank, combo thanks god yeah <laughs> thanks well at least they, they didn't create a, a a new ghetto so yeah, <laughs> i'm fine with that yeah but the sound and what i really 
took me out of it was at the end the megaphone battle was so well done just from a sound editing standpoint because that must have been a nightmare to record and then probably probably uh, again a nightmare to put it properly back together um, was after the megaphone battle they went after the author of the article and beat him up and they used those stock sound footage whipping noises for beating him <laughs> and I was like oh come on guys you could Bugs Bunny right <laughs> yeah something like a uh, Bugs Bunny or something and it was like come on guys you could you could have done better <laughs> just get an intern beat him record that noise and yeah. you're golden or roll some rocks down a cliff or yeah something. exactly do something some, hit some boxes right? yeah 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 or get some stakes and yeah. whip them a bit yeah yeah something <laughs> like that so uh, i'm a the bit torn week, i'm a bit week, torn the one week link huh? yeah i'm i'm a bit torn on the sound but okay. in general amazing how, how, how yeah, it was great. Do, regarding mean, those two points, did you did you, did you even I notice think, it? I think the, I think the the um, as a foreigner who understands dialects in Austria, right, it was still a little bit of a challenge, right, because the the Tyrolean little short bits were spoken so fast, right, and so low, right, is a little bit subtle for me, yeah. And I'm asking, I'm asking myself mm. if the like ac the actual North Germans they would got, have a pro they, they, no, they, would, they probably would have a problem with that. They too. would have a problem too. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's why at Dreisa, people like that get subtitled. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that is subtitled when they mm -hmm. when they watch it, hmm? like like Swiss TV. They're speaking German, but you don't understand it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Then they get subtitled. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but but it was made mostly uh, for the Austrian audience. The I, whole movie. So. No, but to, to to fully answer the question, though, yeah, I I thought the sound was great. The sound editor was had his thinking cap on. Yeah, because uh, there was a lot of there there was a lot of scenes where, like the continuous music, there was a lot of shifting around. That's hard to do. You get the. Right. They, I don't know. I, I, the 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 music set the mood for. I, I mean, they really used that effectively. This this kind of uh, what do you call it? Uh, Schlager stuff mm -hmm. that with the echo and the oh yeah and the autumn and the drum machine right. music right right yeah and yeah. This, Guys, what was it? What did you call it? A foku, like a the the foku healer. Some of these guys have a foku healer. Yeah, vorne kurz, hinten lang, foku hila. Vorne kurz, so front short. Yeah, back long. A mullet. Yeah, a mullet. Okay, yeah. a mullet is a, a more German healer. mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the and you you shorten it to foki in German foki. in Austrian in Austrian German. Can if you, you want to be cool back then, you you had a foki, not a foku hila. Ah, yeah, yeah. Foki. Yeah, yeah. Did anyone ever call each other Foki? <sighs> hey, Foki. Mm, no. Not that I know of, but uh -huh. there were only two kids in my class who were cool enough to wear a Foki. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's difficult. Okay. <laughs> difficult to answer that, honestly. I would have to ask my, my dad because some of his friends back in class, of his class picture, holy shit, their hair was like. They all had Fokis? There was like a 60% rate of Foku healers amongst the men. It was a Foki orgy. <laughs> Foki Foki. <laughs> yeah, some of those, some of those orgy. <laughs> Foki Foki. Yeah. You want some Foki Foki? Yes. <laughs> Foki Foki. Yeah, 20 hey, euros. Foki Foki. Foki <laughs> Foki party. <laughs> That's when that would be a sex scandal. Yep. Uh, title page if a uh, German uh, football player back in the 80s had had something like this yeah he probably danced the fucky fucky there was <laughs> that Austria was not the only mullet nation for sure oh yeah I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah let's yeah. face it I yeah. mean this in the states oh if you yeah. look at some of those uh, the more you go into the south 
high school off. high school yearbooks. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like all almost one hundred percent of the guys had foku fokies. Yeah, mullets. Yeah, yeah. Mullets. And it it went. At least that's the cliche that I observe that we think about the U.S. is yeah. the more you go into the south, the more prevalent of a uh, 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 mullet is gonna be. Still today. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's the truth. That's the truth. I would be hard pressed to imagine that someone with a mullet would be a Hillary Clinton voter. They exist. Yeah. I there think it's more be. the tendency would be the more Trump voter. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. But maybe that's my personal prejudice. Probably. Okay. Yep. You're just being racist towards mullet. I am so- mullet. Yeah, racist towards mullet people. I'm a mullet racist. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that would be a great T-shirt. <laughs> Just a picture of a mullet, yeah. and then it crossed out, and it says uh, uh, "No mullets allowed" or something. No mullets allowed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably. I'm a mulettophobe. Mulettophobe. Yeah. Mulettophobic. Sorry, we yeah, don't, we don't serve you, we don't serve your kind. Yeah. <laughs> no shoes, no shirt, but a mullet, no service. Yeah. <laughs> they could have that on the door of bars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, actually, in the states, they have that that cross out of with no with shirt, ba- no with shirt, ba- no with baseball hats. What? Yeah, like you can't wear a baseball hat or you can't wear a beanie in. Because uh, I don't know what the deal is there. Something, something America. Well, I think it's probably st- it stems from some bar owner having had a bad experience with one guy or two oh, guys. Oh, yeah, and or, then everybody else is... It's, well, it's of, always one guy fucking it up for the rest. Yeah. It's, yeah. We have it's, one guy being, being an idiot and flying a plane into a building, and now we have to... Uh, do extra security for probably the next hundred years uh, when we go on to go to the US. Uh, don't even go there. Oh, I, I was, already went there. I was so. after, <laughs> what is it, 2001? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It yes. was 2001. Damn, for 15 about, years. 15 for about years. four years, I was going back and forth. Yeah. And I didn't care about shaving. I was going back and forth mm. from here to the States. Yeah. And every time, 100%, every time... They said, hey, we picked your name randomly. Randomly, sure. Randomly, sure. and we need to either step aside yeah, and do yeah, some yeah. more checks. Yeah. And I thought, okay, lone guy, unshaven. Ah, yeah. you know, it doesn't, That's why I always travel in a suit and freshly shaven. Yeah. I was never checked. The Canadian border control checked me harder than the Americans did. Ooh. Yeah, really? which was hilarious. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe because you look too American. So. <laughs> I came from America. <laughs> with, so, that, with that suit and clean shaven. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I was in a suit, clean shaven, and I was, but I was exhausted and everything. <laughs> so I had well, probably rings around my eyes and looked a little bit yeah. like a drug abused uh, idiot. Yeah. So, yeah. Nah, sure. Little. A little bit of both. You probably. do you do the the long trip does wear on you and it does look like you maybe just baked or something. And I was stuck in O'Hare? No. What's the what's the Chicago airport? It That's is O'Hare. Yeah. yeah. I was stuck in O'Hare for eight hours. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't sleep? Huh? You didn't sleep? Nope. Mm. Because they always uh, it was united I think they they uh, cancelled my plane it was like I had a two hour layover originally yeah they cancelled my plane put in a plane two hours after the original takeoff mm-hmm. plan takeoff and they did that three times cancelling the plan plane and then uh, reintroducing a new plane eight, two hours later and oh. they did that four times in total, so I was stuck there for eight hours. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was it wasn't the length. I had l- longer layovers, no problem. I take a I take a nap and that's it. But if you kept constantly on edge and like, ooh, now you have to go to that gate because it wasn't the gate. Yeah. Never was the gate the same one. It was every With, time it was a different they gate. Kept changing the gate. Yeah, and O'Hare is a horrible. Yeah, airport to change gates. Yeah, yeah. 
They have like it's like four or five airports in one. Yeah, so it's so you huge. You have to travel from one building. And yeah, yeah, it's these huge. Okay, I didn't have to do. I only had to do that once, but that yeah. was already grading enough that I was like, yeah. uh, I don't want to do this anymore. They have those like building transporters that look like some. Like a like a mixture between a Star Wars movie and a, and a right and a Woody Allen movie, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. go all ac- all the way across the tarmac to the other building. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone gets in. You, know, you just missed that one. It's like, yeah, damn, you know. Right. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, so I, I had I had I, I have an anecdote. Yeah. I I was flying one time back from uh, Portland through Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. and Washington D.C. the transfer got snowed in. So um, they my I missed my flight yeah and they said they they said we're gonna house you up in a hotel. Well, all of the hotels in the area were booked out, so they drove what? me they drove me for two and a half hours into the Virginia Hills. <laughs> I got in this hotel room. I was so happy to like get in there. Yeah, I started taking a shower. Yeah. I got all cleaned up, and then I put on my PJs. And I had been there 20 minutes, and they came knocking on the door and said, okay, we have another flight, you know, you have to get dressed and get back in the van. So I was, I was on, I, I drove, I drove five hours and oh, got a shower. Fuck. And tired, tired does not explain how I felt. Yeah, 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 yeah. you were. But it's like, what's the point? Why did I leave yeah. Washington? Dulles. <laughs> Just yeah. take the train, Anyone man. Thinking here? Just, we, just, are, just take the train. Is this is someone is is the airline getting this huge ri- insurance write off because of the canceled flight and they're, they're just know. booking this? Thing? I don't know. I I think the the European system is done better because you get a, an auto refund. I think not depending on how much your ticket was, mm-hmm. but you get. I think if it's an in, in an international flight inside the EU. And the delay or cancel it, you get like 250 euros or something mm. cash money. Okay. Yeah. One thing I noticed they don't have is um, in the States, if you can produce that somebody died, like a death certificate, yeah. you get a really cheap flight in the okay. States within in domestic. Mm. From here, you, you don't get it. You don't get that. Yeah. And you don't get it from here to the States either. Okay. In fact, you know, you're going to probably be paying top nose. So anyway, that's enough about the yeah. death yeah, thing. Yeah. All yeah. right. So let's, you, let's go on. Yeah. Okay. Enough plain talk. Well, let's plain talk with Tommy we're, and Paul. We're talking about tourism. Here, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's all about tourism in the end. <laughs> we, we, we stay on point. Flaunt what you got. We, right? we stay on target. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the uh, uh, one of my favorite segment, and that's best moment. Ooh, well, hmm. uh, I know what, what my best moment was. So should I, I start and you think about it? Or? I, I know what my best moment was. All right, then go ahead. It was completely slapstick. Really? Yeah, okay. It was when the Germans were too tall for the. For the door frame, for the door frames of the, <laughs> of the Tyrolean Berg house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. both hit their heads one after the other. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a big statement, and that was yeah, see, that's <laughs> big statement. That nice. was also that was also yeah, big statement. Yeah. <laughs> that was also genius. I mean, yeah, totally. because northern Germans are statistically more likely to be taller than Austrians, and it, it told about the nutritional history of the Aust- Austrian mountain people which was historically seen really shoddy they were one of the most malnutritioned people in 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 austria is that true yeah just because they because mountain fields doesn't have the yield Mm. of or you and if it has the yield of a normal field yield of the field uh, field. uh, then then um, i'll have to wield to that yield (laughs) <laughs> um, or you're wielding your using yes, poetry I, sorry yes. thank you um, but yeah um, they like the, the, there's actually I think a Tobias Moretti movie I have to look that up actually where it's all about that uh, the Tyrolians basically sold their kids as slaves 
for like a year or something to the German big farmers in what? Bavaria. Yeah, that was a thing. And they ship them up in trains? No, no, that wasn't. That was pre-train. That was pre-train stuff. What? Yeah, yeah. So they had to travel without the autobahns. Yeah, it was just walking through the mountains in the freezing cold to get to Bavaria, and then they got sold off basically for a year or something mm. or two years mm. and they got free lodging and food well things a slave would get basically right. yeah yeah and they most of them had like were were treated in, in, in very badly yeah yeah that was that was a really dark point of austrian and and, and german history Ooh, when was that period <laughs> all the time <laughs> it's still going on <laughs> that's what that but dude was I was doing like a mountain bike through the woods yeah I was wondering what the hell is this guy doing yeah, yeah it's selling Tyrolean who, kids who are these kids <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah okay so that was your favorite moment was this Pure moment yeah, of, of uh, I mean, slapstick. I, I hate to take the American slapstick. No, no, it's first, fine. It, 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 is was actually, it was funny. Yeah. It was really, really funny. Yeah. It was really funny. Um, because man was... Uh, <laughs> I'm still laughing about it. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Ma Friedrich r rubbing his forehead. <laughs> yeah. Mine was also, of course, a Carl Friedrich moment. And that was at the buffet. Uh-huh. Oh. That that was with the Tupperware. Of, yeah, with the Tupperware, and he was like, "I hate all those tourists." And not even it's so crowded in here. Yeah. And then he continues to blame the Germans about fighting over food at the buffet while stuffing his face with buffet food. Yeah, he's packing up the Tupperware, his Tupperware. Yeah, and not even hiding the Tupperware no, from the hotelier. No, just in plain sight, yeah. filling yeah. it up. Yep. Like as if it's his his entitled right. To, yeah, to just yeah. take food. I, I'm a paying customer. I can have all the food. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and that that was like I'm like oh fuck you man. Loved it this. made him instantly more despicable to the audience. It showed what kind of because he's a really rich guy. He drives the newest Mercedes. He's the owner of a huge company in Germany. But mm. he's still too cheap to buy food. So he steals them from the buffet. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. We can we can we can pause for a bit. One sec. <clears throat> and we're back after a short break. A short pee break, I guess. Dog induced pee break. Dog well yeah yeah but whatever so let's uh so that was where our best moments your was slapstick slapstick my slapstick haha <laughs> uh <laughs> your was slapstick man was what? wow that ball was gone in 60 seconds jesus um I the dog was... just drank a, a whole ball of, of 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 water in like less than 60 seconds jesus is that a dog from the Sahara or something <laughs> from the Sahara zone or something she's a, she's that's a, a puppy everything's a lot faster and bigger yeah. yeah so yeah we both presented our best moments your slapstick man more of a uh, character study I guess what See, was your best moment? The the eat the eating the food and, and oh, at the yeah. buffet and having no 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 self reflection and seeing that you're part of the problem and all that like having yeah. a complete near nearsightedness yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so those both really shine a light on on who who he is. And, and 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 what 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 makes this guy tick and what makes him so so despicable at the end and yeah so we're closing up uh, best moment and going with the uh, um, my my invented uh, like the, the segment for this one and that's the Hifke, an accurate description and I just want you to think about the scene that most embodied German Germanness in this movie. 
Like, which one made you think, ah, oh, shit, that's, yeah, that's a thing Germans do? Um, I would say it was way more subtle. <laughs> it, it was definitely shifting to Germany and having the guy dr driving his Mercedes into his house. Mm. That was... That said, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, but that said everything to me. Yeah, the, yeah. The, that was the establishing the, shot of him, basically. Establishing shot, yeah. And it didn't, it wasn't highly intellectual, but it was, boom, here we are in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, rich guy yeah. who's yeah. trying to embody the, the charming Gemütlichkeit. Has, always has the latest Mercedes series. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. one came with a uh, car phone. Yeah. Car phone. Yeah. yeah. Cutting edge. Which was huge. Yeah. In 1990 yeah. in Austria. <laughs> and you get reception in, in, for, uh, in Tyrol. Fuck yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that at that time, it was the time when you, maybe you were, were you even born then? Uh, you would have to yeah, take your Yeah, two huge, years old. You would have to take your your huge handy your cell phone yeah to the window yeah to get better reception right right I remember yeah. those days yeah me too I got as a hand me down I got my grandma uh, grandpa's old Nokia oh and it it still had the pull out antenna and okay. everything and it didn't I could I couldn't use SMS at that point because the phone didn't support it mm. and it had only twenty five slots for uh contact addresses so I was less like deciding if I got a new number who do I don't really need? who can I throw out basically right. <laughs> and um, it at the end of its life cycle it actually gave me electric shocks so yeah. oh yeah the battery was like a little bit wonky and yeah I, I was I, really happy to get a 3210 afterwards and that Nokia lasted forever yeah, yeah. and then I lost it I have to say, I liked I I liked the retractable antenna. It, was it had kind of, a it kind of dramatic feel, thing, it, right? It made you feel like kind of like a private detective or a right. spy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody who has that, important business to do. That one that claps open. The flip phone. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. I love those. Yeah, it's it's the physical interaction with a digital medium at the end. Yeah. That makes it, I don't know, more real. Sure. Or more more movie that's the, yeah 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 exactly it gives you action mm -hmm. even if there's none <laughs> so yeah that's that's your most german germanness mm -hmm. um for me it was the germans uh when they went to the uh, uh to the mountain farm basically broke in it's the slapstick moment, but what happened afterwards, they were just like, oh, there's nobody here. Okay, let's just sit down and eat all the food, drink all the drinks, and sing horrible German songs until somebody shows up. Oh, God. And being really entitled about it. Like, yeah, of course it's fine. We, we are already basically guests. They're gonna, we're gonna give them money in the future, even though a deal hasn't been struck yet. <laughs> But they, they can't refuse a future thing, even though it's their own home. Okay, but w would that happen in real life? Um, really? I have actually no idea. But it, when it comes to being aloof and like feeling better about yourself, entitled, entitled and all that stuff, mm -hmm. it transports that Germanness very well. And it's kind of historical, you know, 1938, basically. Yeah, you come in here, and the, the Germans come, just come in here, and they're like, "Yep, yeah, that that's all our stuff now. It all belongs to us." Even to the point we, we didn't even ask yet, but it's all ours, basically, something like that. Yeah. Even to the point of maybe thinking that your your hosts should be grateful that you're there. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That's. <laughs> That's really the thing that We're, that grinds my gears, my German gears. We will bless you with our presence. <laughs> yes, you should be grateful that we chose your location and not anybody else's. You should be grateful, not the other way around. Yeah, so fuck those guys. <laughs> this is the point. And then that's why we move on to the 
to the last bit the, the podcast is already l running as long as the movie anyways so <laughs> and i'm doing minimal editing so okay we yeah it's probably now 30 something like that in total don't mention any girl past girlfriends nick by name ah <laughs> uh, no 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 <laughs> i learned that lesson the hard way <laughs> uh. <laughs> no i didn't um I don't want to learn that lesson. Uh, so let's move on to our last point, and that's final conclusion. Okay. Yeah. Final conclusion. What did you think of that episode? Would you recommend it to somebody else? How would you most probably give somebody else the chance to enjoy it in the best way? Like watch it with friends or alone or... Yeah, I think the the thing was shot in 1990. Yeah, it's 2017 now, so yeah. we're talking 27 years difference. Jesus, yeah, it's There's, nearly as old as me. At yeah. the time, at the time, they were talking about uh, freshly East Germans, and there was some reference there. I, I noticed on some of the headlines in the newspapers they had yeah, there. The, for, um, yeah, yeah, Deutschmark was this thing. The whole monetary. I, I think there would be a little bit lost because now we're both... If you're Europe. talking about a native speaker, somebody who speaks English, uh -huh. because an Austrian, he's going to be fine. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, a, I mean, I was just saying that a little bit of the message might be lost because uh, there is the Euro now, but then yeah. there's not this like, oh, we've got our tough Deutschmark, you know, Bearer bond based yeah, yeah, yeah. currency, Bullshit, yeah. But um, yeah, they. I I think now it's kind of like a little bit of a time capsule. Yeah, you know, because, totally because it it shows how like a lot of the facets that they used mm. are not so up to date. But it it's an I think in the big picture. It shows the relationship between the Germans and the Austrians. Right. That will never change. That, yes. That remains consistent. Yeah. It's totally. Just, it's just the, still the same. Just the way. background and the facets yeah. change, yeah. but it's still the same. Yeah. Yeah. And tourism is still like a huge factor for Tyrol. Uh, uh, the 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 preservation effort that the 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 the, the teacher was like alluding to uh is small to non-existent in some parts still where everything is gonna get a uh, a, a positive ruling as long as it furthers the tourism branch like fuck nature we're <laughs> gonna put in not four more snow cannons yeah drain all the the lakes don't give a fuck i have to say um, something that was a little bit inconsistent was the character that Tobias Moretti played because mm -hmm. at first he was throwing the the insulting newspapers into the into the uh, magazine store like hey stop selling these yeah and then a later scene which I thoroughly enjoyed yeah. thoroughly enjoyed yeah he was playing with the ho the, the hose the fire hose yeah and he just and wouldn't spraying the Germans wouldn't he was acting like it was a mistake that he yeah. couldn't stop the hose and he's just spraying the Germans right into their car yeah, yeah. and he wouldn't stop that was yeah. actually really cathartic somehow yeah, yeah I'm sure I'm not the only person who really enjoyed that scene, oh yeah yeah, yeah. So. that's a good some wet but, Germans are always fun wet Germans <laughs> Wetbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They cross the Rhine or the Dan yeah. Donau. <laughs> but you would recommend recommend it for other people to watch it. Just Absolutely. for the just for the Austrian German Absolutely, it's funny. It's yeah. Yeah. And Na native speakers will pick the Austrians will pick all that up and it's yeah. just funny. It's like I guess it would be It's like a relief. Even watch. for you who already watched it and it got already explained to, I still had some tidbits that you didn't know about. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess watch it with with somebody who knows it or yeah. who or who's with not, subtitles. Who, who's, who's, or get some really good subtitles. But I, again, it's really hard for this show to get proper subtitles. So ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like from the from the Tyrolean dialect to mm. to high German. 
that might be a, a plus. Yeah. If, it, if that yeah. exists, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Does it oh, exist? It's probably somewhere out there. Yeah. Again, it's the the, the Austrian um, DVD market is horrible when it comes to properly properly translating and even offering subtitles uh -huh. sometimes they don't even offer german subtitles because i don't know they don't give a fuck apparently <laughs> and like netflix is better at that stuff mm. and that's sad that's a sad statement that like the officially from the rf the sponsored dvds don't can't have any international appeal because they're missing the fucking subtitles that you need to watch that shit in another country. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I don't know. Well, hold on. This is a really yeah. important point because I don't, I don't necessarily think that, um, I mean, I, I took Spanish one time. I had a Spanish professor and he said, yeah. if you don't speak the local language, you won't understand the culture. Right. Right. And you have to spend some time there too to get the the mentality. Yeah. And so yeah. So what what I'm thinking is that it makes no it makes no sense. It makes no sense to um, have a, like an English version of this or a French version. It just doesn't make sense because that you're not getting the jokes 100%. Oh yeah, no no, there's uh, you, definitely going to be some lost in translation stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the the jokes are within the Austrian mentality. Yeah. I was actually get yep. the, get this. I was actually given a proposal. I was actually given a proposal by Paul Harather, who is the producer of Slovener. Okay. He nice. was he wanted to he wanted to bring it to the American market. Right. And I was excited about that. And then right. I watched it. Yeah. And I told nope. him, I told him, I said, and I came back to him and yeah. I said, I'm really honored that you would pick me to be that guy. Yeah. Right. To translate and interpret everything. Yeah. But, but the fact is, it's not going to work. Yeah. You've got Viennese humor. Yeah. That just won't translate. Nope. I could put all kinds of stuff in there yeah. and fill their mouth with like American jokes, but it's not going to work. Mm, it's yeah. just, there's, it's too cultural specific. Yeah. So, totally. And that's the deal with the Pifka saga. Yeah. You just can't, you won't be able to synchronize. Sorry. You won't be able to. You kind of could probably do the Germans. To Germans. Yeah. The yeah. Germans you could do probably do without losing too much of the, the human sense. But not to be, I don't know, yeah, uh, uh, feeling better about myself as an Austrian, but the Austrian dialect does have some nuances that the German one is lacking. Of course, yeah. And you really saw that, yeah. especially the also the the Viennese dialect. The guy that he the the the, 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 the newspaper author newspaper guy and his best friend the tyrolean uh, uh teacher like the difference in dialect alone between those two is is already a statement on the austrian mind and and, and the austrian situation so i know like you would have to have put in like i don't know f f three sentences at least to explain why that is already funny. Yeah? Because you're like, okay, Vienna and then Tarot right. and why they, how they even got, got to be friends yeah. and stuff like that. So you would have to explain all that stuff and circle back to the dialogue yeah. to make it funny again. So yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely something you should watch with a native speaker who who can give you some background and stuff like that right and and having said that i have seen the later things that we're probably going to discuss yeah the discussion they had a round like a round table right of all the these actual yeah hoteliers from yeah. from the industry right and we can talk about that later oh yeah we're gonna talk to uh, this podcast is already too long so yeah. okay <laughs> But I was amazed. Yeah. I was amazed that, yeah, 
things got taken serious anyway mm. and that 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 nullifies the cultural statement that you have to be Austrian to understand that because I think a lot of Austrians didn't understand it oh no no that, that's that's the thing no, that's, that's even a the, funnier joke yes because that's not the first time that this happened I don't know if you know Mr. Uh, Herr, Herr Karl mm-hmm. Helmut Qualtinger's Qualtinger's movie yeah like a staple of Austrian movie making and comedy like there's nothing comparable to Mr. Karl and Herr Karl is most of the Austrians didn't understand it either when it came out yeah People hated it. He got death threats. Was com- compared to a, a Nestbeschmutzer stuff like that. Yeah, Ooh. like like uh, like he was like he was uh, killing the Austrian soul and betraying his folk and all that stuff by just being Austrian, basically, which Herr yeah. Karl was. He was a accurate description of the Austrian soul, and they just couldn't take it. And the same thing happened with the Piefke saga. And that same thing happens with anything that criticizes the Austrian state of mind. The status basically. quo, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon, caught on a middle, same thing again. The Austrian police didn't think that was funny and actually started a petition back then to stop shooting and airing cotton. Really? It didn't go anywhere, of course. Uh-huh. But, but still, that shows how little humor to like we have a real i don't know uh, rift between people who are really funny and enjoy humor in austria and people who are really not funny and really don't get a joke ever like what's up, what's up with that i what, don't know is it like some crazy family setting they grew up in and, i don't know yeah. man i don't know i don't know but but we either have again we either have crazy funny people or we have the opposite really boring non funny people there's nothing in between we don't have we don't have the <laughs> casually funny guy apparently we have two modes yeah i, I probably have to read um, finally finish reading um, uh, uh, what's his name uh, sigmund freud's uh, der witz the yeah. joke his book all about the jewish joke and jokes in general and the uh, the, the, he goes into Austrian jokes as well and stuff like that. So I should finish reading that. Maybe I would understand it then from a from a yeah a better standpoint. I, I <laughs> you know this the thing is this is a very uh, very significant part of the Austrian society. I I think these people have a lot to do with the low crime rate. Yeah, you know. I mean, yeah. I was uh, two days ago. It was a windy day, and I thought I'd take my vacuum yeah. compartment right. down to the park. Right. And it's windy, and it's a you dust, can just dust air day, it out, and I can clean it all out. Yeah. Yeah. And this lady up in the third floor, third floor, she yelled down. She said, she was saying, "Hey, that's not a wise thing. Can't you throw that away somewhere else?" Yeah. And I said, "Well, actually, it, in my in my house, it's too dusty to do this. I'm yeah. just doing it here. I'm getting myself all dirty." Yeah. She said, "No, that's not a good idea." And it's like, and I told her, uh, "Maybe you should brew your own coffee, like the yeah, that, yeah. you know the and, Come and says that, you coffee. that cliche." Yeah, you know? yeah. And then I put my headset on and I started. I put Led Zeppelin up to eleven <laughs> <laughs> and continued. That's a Spinal Tap reference for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I have wow, you old. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> didn't didn't think that you would get that, I right? I, I didn't think that would date me. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But on the old, yeah. On the old thing, there was mm-hmm. an there was an old reference. Another time, my my American friend from uh, my American friend from Brooklyn, yeah. We were throwing a football out on the street, and uh, a, a gal who was probably not over twenty, right? She walked along and she said, um, "That's not legal to do on the street." Right. And my friend in German in Wienerisch, yeah. he said, um, "You're 
you're too young to be old. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Nice, didn't, nice. Didn't miss a beat. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's a, I think a part of the Austrian uh, German precision is that we have designated playing roads. Yeah, the Spielstraßen. Rules and zones. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Everything has to be compartmentalized and put in little boxes, and those boxes put in bigger boxes. Well, I I like the das ist nicht normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Because right. I don't want to do anything normal. Oh either. yeah, not in Austria. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, well, doing something normal in Austria means that you gave up. If I hear that anymore, I just say danke. Yeah. Like immediately. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Should should fire out like a gun. There's a couple other references that are funny. Um, this thing about. Uh, yeah. We have to close this up, okay. dog. I'm sorry All to right. cut you off, but no problem. We, we, thank you again for being here. Let's you do. Betcha. Let's do your plugs. Where can people find you? Do you have a Facebook, Twitter, something, something where people can find you and 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 follow your work? Yeah. Um. All of my film and music work is under uh, Tommy Meyer Ortiz. It, it's currently Tommy McMahon. Yeah. Though, because I tried to change the last name, just playing around. And, so. McMahon is M C M A H O N. So yeah. Tommy McMahon. It's the link is gonna be in the description below. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I have everything there. I didn't isolate my business from my private. All I, right. I, all right. It's all in one point. In uh, got yeah. Like, pulled together. In and one if you point. go way back in my photos, maybe there's one photo of, of an underwear shot. But nice. You have to really you you gotta want it. Yeah. Sure. And I'm sure is it tidy whities? Or like a nice set you, of briefs. You you keep, you keep calling me old. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I have I, to. I get it. I have to. I have to. I have to feel better about I'm, myself. I'm on. I'm on your, your, your ruse. <laughs> no, it's not tidy whities. Yeah. Okay. It's tidy blueies. <laughs> tidy navy. Navy blue. Navy tidy blue. baby blueies. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> So people can find you there. Um, um, please follow follow uh, my podcast. We are on iTunes. We are on Facebook. We are now on Twitter too. So and yay for Twitter, I guess. Another plug is the two films I'm working on. One is called the right. Mole. One is called the Mole. It's a yeah. musical comedy. Right. And it's set mainly. In I'm here. actually stoked about that. When you told me about the concept and everything, <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah. Um, it has it takes the piss out of Austria. Yeah. A lot of jokes. When is the, the release date? The, the, the middle. Is, well, is the release date? Principal photography is probably going to take place in April two thousand eighteen. Okay, so April, so you're probably... I'm in at the, the end of 2018, you're done. Probably. I'm in the finish the synopsis, uh, get the script together, yeah. and then spend one year looking for the big money. Period. Nice, yeah. nice. But yep. We already have the story. We got. I already cast everybody. Great. A lot of Austrian fantastic uh, talent here. Yeah. All, Singers it's and so dancers. Much, so much untapped potential yeah. in Austria. I think Austria, yeah, that's one, that's an interesting aspect of Austrians. The, but they they practice and practice and practice and practice and reach this high level and then they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, because and, there's no opportunity in Austria. And so I'm here to like glean that, ah, harvest that. Yeah, you know? you're well, just you're yeah. just keep scooping up the goodness and as, as, yeah. as long as it's cheap. Right. Yeah. Make them famous, then they're gonna be appreciative of you forever, and then you get follow-up jobs until you die. Hopefully. Which is gonna be in Hopefully. a few years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I intend, Boom! Last old man joke. Okay, I'm uh, done. <laughs> yeah. I intend on harvesting that big white field of cotton or other colors of cotton. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, the in, United uh, Colors in, of Benetton in, Cotton. In Austria. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and we're also doing a film called Dene, which is. Uh, uh, it's like Dene Ne. Dene Ne. Dene Ne. Yeah. Dene. <laughs> It's yep. a famous painting by Gustav Klimt. Right. And yeah, it's actually, we decided to make it funny. Right. As they did with Amadeus. Nice. Um, I'm, Milos, I'm all Milos for Forman. There's, there's, not, enough, there's he, not enough funny art art movies out there. Well, they're all so dead serious and they're like, oh, the drama and I'm chopping off my own ear or something. And yeah. I'm like, Ooh. Well, you don't yeah. get, 
you don't get if you're a historian accurately yeah. you don't get that gaggling laughing character out of Amadeus Mozart nope yeah but he added that and it yeah. made it made the film way yeah. better way Absolutely. better he, way better there was something to watch yeah exactly so yeah you can't... because the the following Amadeus Mozart thing was mm -hmm. done in I don't know four or five historic documentaries mm -hmm. or something like that and uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, he parted too much, and that's why he died. Ooh. But any he, any rock star story, basically, you can copy paste that stuff, and if you make it funny, it's something else. Well, Gustav Klimt is such a fixture in and a money a cash cow for Austrian tourism. Oh I, yeah. I, I, oh yeah. I am. I I will give. But he is an amazing artist too. Absolutely. Yeah. And a great personality. Yeah. And. I will Didn't try my wife? best to make fun of the Austrian tourism yep. situation there. <laughs> Absolutely. There, yeah. I, 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 if it takes a time machine or whatever, yeah. I'm going to suck that out yeah. and use it and make people laugh nice. at it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So anyway, that's, that's yep. my, those are my two things right now. My two babies. Yeah. All right, Tommy. Thank you for being here. It has been amazing. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! I'm, I'm okay. I'm turning this this episode in a two part or two okay. because we are two hours again, <laughs> and it's it's your fucking Americans. <laughs> the same thing happened with Reggie. He's like, oh yeah, let's talk. Oh, let's be funny for two hours, and we were amazingly funny. He was amazingly funny. I was just playing the ball back at him and like, <laughs> okay. oh, all right, let's 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 do this. And then two one hours later, it was like coming out of a coma like what the fuck happened and the same thing is here on a different level but yeah. still though fuck you man <laughs> in the nicest way possible okay well well thank you <laughs> anyway. and i hope i'm i'm gonna have you back yeah you will i'm i'm good to go absolutely oh, great yeah and we we're gonna discuss the next episode of the pifke saga with tommy in this case i have his word if not rate his facebook Looking, um, looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, please subscribe, whatever. Do the whole, the whole thing. It's all in the description anyways. Um, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs>